Hello again, or welcome back if you're new here. Previously on the channel, we talked about a 20th century technology that's helped many, many people on their journey towards fluency in other languages. And it's a bit divisive, that technology, but nonetheless, it's helped people. And ChatGPT, already people are telling me they're using it as part of their journey with languages. And, you know, people are also asking me, what would you do from a memory perspective to create rich, evocative images that help, in a memory palace, get that target information into long-term memory when you're dealing with languages. I'm not just talking about vocabulary and phrases, but also grammar rules, because there's a lot that you need to absorb in a language. So this video today is for you if you would like tips from a memory perspective about how to use a technology like ChatGPT to help you, and you're very, very excited and interested in these technologies, but you want to avoid some pitfalls. And nota bene, I'm going to approach this and introduce some new terms that you may not have heard before. And you know, if you have heard them before, let me know in the chat where you learned them because they're really cool and I would love to learn more about them myself. But I'm going to take this from the perspective of someone who has learned languages. So if you find that kind of information useful, then hit that thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed already, please subscribe. Help support this mission by being part of it. Be part of the League of Extraordinary Learners who use the rocket fuel of memory techniques to make learning so much faster and so much more fun. And along those lines, coming up is my Language of Memory Live cohort course. If you're interested in learning more about the techniques I'm going to share with you today, then I've got some free videos for you when you register your interest in advance at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash L-O-M. And those videos will take what we're talking about today a little bit deeper. And there's no obligation to join Language of Memory Live by claiming these videos. All right, so I want to approach the chat GPT thing by introducing you to a term or helping you revitalize a term you may already know, which is laddering for language learning. What is laddering? Well, once you have liftoff in a language, rather than using your mother tongue, to learn that other language, you learn that other language in another language. What I mean by learning one language in another is when I started learning Mandarin, to give you an example, I just went to the store in Berlin and I grabbed a German textbook on Chinese characters. And so everything in this book is either in Mandarin or German. So I'm laddering from German into Mandarin. This not only exercises my German, but also you know, exercises the skills of learning a new language. I read about Chinese grammar in German as well, and that gave me, you know, these two books alone, a great deal of momentum in the language, and I did it without any English at all. That's laddering. So I thought I would use laddering again in an interesting way to, first of all, practice some German and see how that went, and then add on another language, which we'll talk about as we go. But the first thing I just said here is, you know, can you speak to me in German? And the computer said, yeah, natürlich, and asked me what I wanted from it. You know, it said, wie kann ich dir helfen? Yeah, okay, so I say, ich möchte mein Deutsch verbessern. And I focused in on a topic that interests me, in this case, philosophy. So I started to say to it, you know, uh, ask me questions about philosophy, and then I gave answers, and I asked it to give me suggestions about how I could improve my German as a result of it reading my answers. So this was kind of cool because it introduced new vocabulary. I don't know why I didn't know the word die Vielfalt before, but nonetheless, it gave me an opportunity to learn a new word. And I practiced something else, which is called prospective thinking. So basically what I did is I just tried to think about it and then I confirmed my guess with the software. And so field fault is there and I said, was bedeutet field fault? Uh, after I was done thinking about it and see what it said. And it basically confirmed what I thought, which is basically, you know, it, it means like a diversity of ideas in this particular uh, context. So prospective thinking is... When you come across something that you don't know or you don't recognize it or you've even forgotten it, you don't immediately jump into the dictionary, but you guess what it means. And in the case of ChatGPT, put the brakes on, stop, think about what it might mean, then ask for clarification. And in this particular case, I asked it to clarify and it said, 
I basically said, so in andro vorter es bedeutet diversität. In other words, it means diversity. And it said, yeah, genau. I mean, I don't know if it said, yeah, genau, but <laughs> I mean, you know, exactly. Uh, and it confirmed my meaning. Then, just to be clear, then I went and looked in the dictionary to see what it means. And yeah, I got other definitions of what it possibly can mean. And that's pretty cool. So that's the process. Rather than always looking things up, you guess first, which is prospective thinking, and that's going to help you form memories. And it's just a beautiful thing to be able to not always go immediately to the source. And this is a process and a concept in all memory, which is called active recall in the science. And I'll give you an example in Mandarin here. This is a Mandarin word, and I just drew a little image. And then when I was training myself to learn this, this image is also in a memory palace, there's no answer on the back of the card. That's a very, very important principle because the lack of the answer on the card, it causes me to do prospective thinking. So I know I drew this. There's that character. There's this weird image here. Oh, that must be to live Jew in Mandarin. And it's forming the memories a lot faster. Okay, so that's prospective thinking and it maps onto the best memory science we have. Then I asked ChatGPT, Hmm, <laughs> I wonder if it can handle something more complex. And so I basically said, now I want to learn a, bit of, a little bit of Latin. And I want to use German as the ground language or the foundational language. So jetzt werde ich ein bisschen Latein lernen mit Deutsch als Grundsprache. And then, <laughs> wo genau sollen wir anfangen? And that, is, that means, you know, where should we start? And it said, oh, that sounds very interesting. Uh, let's do it. And it gave some suggestions of where to start. And then I asked it, and you know, some of my German here is certainly not correct, but nonetheless, I asked it, you know, I said, in German, there's a lot of Eselsbrücke, which is a word for memory techniques. And uh, wh which do you, what, what, what would you suggest for Magnus? And I, I think I, you know, am the the uh, at fault here because I asked it in Aller Arten. What I was trying to say is, like, how would we decline <laughs> large in Latin, Magnus, in all of its uh, different uh, declinations? And so it maybe was giving it too much at once, and it started saying things that I, I really don't know what it was trying to um, <laughs> to do here. But it, I think it thinks because we were talking in German that Magnus was for different words uh, than I meant. So uh, after some back and forth, I asked it to create a table of the declensions for large in Latin. And it seems to have thought that I was talking about magicians. So certainly these are the cases in Latin, but I wasn't asking about magicians. And when I finally got down to getting closer to the actual declensions for Magnus, it's still off quite some bit, but nonetheless, now it's finally got some mnemonic images. So for Magnus in the nominative case, it's suggesting imagining a large magnifying glass. Okay, that's cool. It's understood something. So the Magnus has M-A-G and magnifying glass has N-A-G, but why wouldn't it have like a giant U.S. flag and the movie Us. I think Jordan Peele directed Us. So, you know, those, those are much more evocative images that I would put in my memory palace. The problem here is, is that this isn't exactly correct. Like in the evocative here, I'm not sure what MAGA is or what have you. Hey, large, Maggie, hey, large. <laughs> like imagine a magician's wand creating something large. Uh, it seems to have not followed the plot of what I'm asking. Now, again, I'm asking it maybe not in the best possible ways, but that's practice itself in the laddering technique. Now, basically what I had to do to go and try and work this out is actually look at a proper declension table created by someone who is an expert in this language. And, you know, if you're needing to memorize something like this and I have to memorize this, you know, it's just, what do you do? What are the steps? Well, you'd better make sure that you get the actual declensions that are accurate to memorize. And ChatGPT, at least the way I was asking it, 
is not giving them correctly. Maybe there's a way, and you can let me know in the chat if you have found a way to get it to make declension tables that make sense. I may be confusing it by asking it to give mnemonic examples at the same time, but I think all of its mnemonic examples are quite weak. So anyway, if you're learning Latin, this is one place to get them from Luke Rainieri, and there's many other places to get declension tables that are accurate and useful. So definitely have fun with these tools, but cross-index the suggestions with a native expert speaker, and it's not that big of a deal to memorize incorrect things. It gives you practice to memorize incorrect things. But if you want to memorize nonsense words and so forth, there is a source where you can actually get nonsense words to practice with. And I talk about that in my spaced repetition video, which you can go ahead and watch next. And then you'll learn where to get a bunch of nonsense words if you want to practice with nonsense words. But when it comes to declension tables for languages, whether it's Latin or German or whatever you might need to decline, please make sure that you are fact-checking whatever you're getting from ChatGPT. But for laddering, I found that his German is quite good, and I would still need to go and check with a native speaker if I was going <laughs> to you know, take too much of its advice uh, in terms of correcting how that I needed corrections on some of my ways that I'm writing German. But it turns out that die Verfault, or die Vielfalt, sorry, is, I'm still memorizing it, it's, it is a legit word and I learned it. I, I don't remember ever seeing it before and now my vocabulary has grown. And it's just a simple matter of putting it in a memory palace. And you know, when it comes to those declension tables, you can use different ways in the memory palace. I mean, I think I can do it now. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, um, ablative, and then the last one is vocative, right? And then that table, if we're doing Magnus, it's just a matter of laying it out in the memory palace, following the lines of flight of each thing. It's essentially reproducing a table on the, the wall. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Just make sure, again, that the material you're getting is checked out in tickety-boo, because Again, if you want to memorize something just for practice, there are sources of nonsense vocabulary and they're in this video. So I hope you'll join us for Language of Memory Live, even if it's just to get those free videos at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash L-O-M. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found this useful and had as much fun with it as I had fun making it for you. Until we have a chance to speak again, thank you for joining me. Thanks for your thumbs up. Thanks for all your comments and keep yourself magnetic. Guten Tag, ChatGPT. Ich möchte mein Deutsch verbessern. Kannst du mir helfen? Ich bin kein ChatGPT. Ich bin ChatGPT Rex. Also.